Hello, my name is Alan Foom and today I'm going to talk about natural gas storage. So it's an overview of how natural gas is stored. Obviously, quite a lot of this is in the news right now. We're coming up to winter in the Northern Hemisphere and this is the peak withdrawal time. So this is a cycle of gas uh, storage and withdrawal. So you have withdrawal here in the winter months and then storage in the summer months. This is the rough storage facility of the east coast of England and different types of uh, storage in gas, depleted fields, salt formations, depleted aquifers, and this is gas levels and storage in Europe right now. Obviously quite a big issue with the energy crisis. So how is gas stored and why is gas stored? Well, you can store in different types of uh, facility, uh, depleted gas fields, salt caverns, aquifers, and also surface facilities. I'll talk a little bit about those in a, in a, in a minute. Um, different countries have got different storage policies uh, to do with uh, what their seasonality is in terms of gas demand. Obviously, uh, countries in the Northern Hemisphere, uh, USA and, and Europe have got cold winters. Therefore, demand for gas is very seasonal. Also, if you've got indigenous gas, we tend not to have much in the way of storage. For instance, Norway doesn't have much in the way of storage. And neither does the UK, which is a bit of a problem, but we'll talk a little bit about that later. Uh, whereas other countries that uh, have traditionally been big gas importers have got significant storage facilities, like, for example, Germany. And reasons for gas storage are supply security, so insurance against disruption. So, for example, if a major gas importing pipeline goes down, you have some backup. Also, smoothing peak demand. We have particularly cold spell in the winter, uh, you know, a week of uh, sub-zero temperatures in a country that normally doesn't experience them, like the UK. You then empty the gas storage to meet that demand. And maintaining constant production through the year. So again, you want to keep your gas flow rate as constant as reasonably possible as a reservoir engineer, uh, but demand isn't constant. Therefore, you're putting some in storage tends to smooth that out. So different types of storage technologies. Uh, so you've got uh, salt caverns, aquifers, and depleted fields. Depleted fields is by far the biggest of those. Uh, you've got porous rocks, ceiling rock above in a trap, you had hydrocarbons in there, you still got some hydrocarbons in there, and you pump, uh, but so the reserves have been uh, largely depleted. So what you would do is you pump in gas in the, store, in the filling season, and then you withdraw gas in the, in the withdrawal season via wells. Aquifers, same thing, except they never had gas there in the first place, so there's some subsurface risk with that. Salt caverns are slightly smaller. Uh, you've got basically domes of rock salt in the subsurface. You then excavate a cavern through a solution by pumping in water. And then again, that's accessed by a production well and a withdrawal well. Uh, salt caverns tend to be a lot quicker to, to uh, install than uh, depleted gas fields or aquifer storage. This can take a year, 18 months. This can take over multiple years. You need a long-term plan. Now, surface facilities are a lot smaller in terms of volume, uh, but they can be located right next to the source of um, demand. So you can have a liquefied natural gas tank that's right next to a, a major chemical plant. So if a petrochemical plant local pipeline dis gets disrupted, they've got gas to maintain production until that's, uh, that's uh, restored. You also have these gasometers uh, that were located in British cities. So this is the Oval Cricket Ground. This is uh, another gasometer in London which uh, store gas in a compressed state. So this is an example of how it's done. So gas is compressed by water, and then you reduce the water, you reduce the pressure, and then gas flows out. You can also pack your pipelines. Uh, so the recent uh, explosions in Nord Stream 2 were as a result of gas, which is already stored in that pipeline. And then also the other final type of solution you have on the surface is a floating LNG regasification tanker, uh, FSRU. So these can be berthed at LNG import terminals and then could store cargoes of LNG is to come in. So a, an importing cargo com tanker comes in, offloads its tanker, and this is then stored and fed out through the system a bit uh, slowly. So there's some terminology on storage. Now this is quite important in terms of understanding what's there. So the total storage capacity is all of this bar chart in here. From the bottom, you've got unrecoverable gas. So this is gas that tends to get bonded in the formation. It's irreducible. It's not going to come out. And there's Normally, I don't know, 5-10% of it, like gas like that, typical uh, for a uh, for producing gas field. Then you have cushion gas to maintain pressure. This could be uh, original gas. So, for example, in a depleted field, there will be some gas left. 
And then you've got the working gas. So the green bit is the gas and storage, and the blue bit is the free gas capacity. And in this case, uh, the, the gas storage facility is about two thirds full. So this is what you, when people talk about working gas capacity, this is what they talk about. Uh, other bits of terminology are deliverability withdrawal rate, which is how fast you can withdraw gas from a facility over a set period of time, uh, generally cubic meters per day, and injection capacity or rate, so how fast can you inject gas during the injection season to, uh, to fill up the, uh, the storage facility. And this is an example of a salt cavern, so you've got various compressors, surface facilities, etc., and wells going into the salt cavern to fill it up. And a cycling rate is how many times a facility can be filled up within an operational year. A little bit about uh, gas storage throughout the world. Uh, so this is from uh, SETI Gas, a uh, information service. So this is a storage capacity by region. So North America, former Soviet Union, primarily Russia, uh, Europe. Those are the main areas we have gas storage. Very little in Asia or Oceania. The demand tends to be not that seasonal. Um, I mean, okay, a little bit uh, extra in the summer for, ele for electricity generation, ditto the Middle East, but they've got lots of indigenous uh, gas in the Middle East, used for electricity generation and petrochemicals, and Asia tends to be either LNG or indigenous gas, but Europe, North America, and the former Soviet Union are the main facilities. So numbers of facilities, again, dominated by North America, withdrawal rates dominated by North America, and the cushion gas capacity which is to maintain everything that's going there. And the working capacity is about a third, a third, and a third. Within Europe, again, this is from SETIGAS, um, 99 BCM of storage capacity, which kind of makes percentages easy to calculate. Germany, about a fifth. Italy, 16%. France, 13%. And then all the others. UK is relatively low, and I'll come to that in a minute, why that is and why that might be a problem in the future. So in terms of uh, world storage working gas capacity, USA, Russia, Ukraine uh, are in terms of working gas capacity and peak withdrawal rate, USA, Russia, Germany. Again, big gas users. Uh, Germany is unusual because it doesn't have much indigenous gas, which is a big problem right now. This is a little bit about uh, USA gas storage. So again, producing areas in Texas, uh, Oklahoma, Louisiana. So that's the Permian. Eagleford, Haynesville, Oklahoma uh, formations, etc. And then in the east, you've got Marcellus uh, in uh, Appalachia. And you've got uh, depleted fields, uh, which are the um, which are the uh, stars, aquifers. Again, not many oil field, not many gas fields and oil fields in, the, in Illinois, but quite a lot of demand in the Midwest. And um, salt caverns along the Gulf Coast, where you've got uh, big Jurassic salt domes, which is also what is used for the strategic petroleum reserve. And this is all linked by pipelines. Um, but you can see a big island problem here in the in the northeast where they've actually have to import LNG because of local political concerns. A little bit about the UK. Uh, UK is short of gas storage, and that has traditionally been the case because the UK has been, until about 10 years ago, independent in terms of natural gas with all the gases and the gas in the North Sea. UK uh, still produces around 40-45% of its own gas indigenously, and most of the rest is imported to some extent from uh, Norway uh, using these pipelines, uh, or from the middle, mainland Europe uh, going into Bacton, so that's Bacton, this is Easington, or through liquefied natural gas going into Canvey Island, Isle of Grain, or Milford Haven, which is where Dragon LNG is. Um, one of my former colleagues' actual job title was Dragon Shipping Manager, so she was responsible for shipping LNG into, into the Dragon Terminal, not for actually shipping dragons, but that's quite amusing. Uh, in terms of uh, storage facilities, there's some salt caverns around here, around Hornsey in, uh, in East Yorkshire, and the rough storage facility, which was decommissioned as a storage facility and is now going to be recommissioned. A little bit about rough. Uh, the rough field is located at the coast of Yorkshire. So this is a place called Easington on the, in the on the coast of Yorkshire, which is uh, the main gas terminal. So that imports gas from other fields as well. Rough was originally a Permian uh, gas field, uh, typical reservoir for the place, uh, Rodlegan Reservoir. Uh, 24 to 36 kilometers uh, water depth, reservoir 2,700 meters deep. 
Uh, it was developed in the 1970s and in the early 1980s, British Gases then was bought out to other joint venture partners and converted to a storage facility by building these three new platforms here. So that's these two platforms in illustrated. Uh, its main reason was uh, to meet peak winter demand. So this bit here during the main um, uh, production season and injection season in the summer. British Gas was at the time a national monopoly and had to ensure that uh, gas is, uh, is always available. It had 3.3 uh, billion cubic meters uh, uh, gas capacity, 44 MCM withdrawal, 125 MCM injection. Uh, it's to do with the size of the pipelines. Could meet 12% uh, of UK peak demand for 19 days. So effectively peak guarantee. However, storage had a complicated history in terms of economics. Uh, it became less economic due to the arbitrage in prices between summer and winter, and the facility was getting old and maintenance costs made future use uneconomic. So in 2017, Centrica, the owners, uh, successor company of British Gas, decided to close it as a production facility and then move on to being a um, just producing the cushion gas. But that's gonna be reopened potentially later. Looking at storage capacity in Europe, uh, you can see from this uh, chart from S&P Global, this is in terms of day supply. So UK only has 10 day supply of storage, which is fine if you've got plenty of indigenous gas, but when that's no longer the case and you're reliant on liquefied natural gas for uh, a quarter to a third of your inputs, it's becoming a bit of a problem. Spain has been a big LNG importer, so that's less so. And then moving further east, you tend to get um, somewhat uh, somewhat more germany is the key one to watch for italy is a key one to watch for because they're the two biggest storage uh, uh, capable areas and they both got roughly 100 days supply although that's kind of not as simple as that so this is storage levels in europe uh, so that's the latest one from august the second roughly 70 percent. i think now we're at about 80 percent in terms of storage level but this is why storage in europe is so important so this is um, different types of gas in the in uh, in uh, the in uh, Europe by storage. So this is domestic production. Okay, it goes kind of steady, uh, but in, has been in steady decline for a long time. Then you've got LNG imports that's gone up quite lately, uh, gone up from uh, 19 onwards, and this is piped imports, and 80% of that is Russia. That's now gone. So you've got the storage in winter. So when that goes, you cannot meet full demand. Very scary situations. Zima Pabrizhaitsa. So to sum up, key points. Natural gas storage to ensure supply security. Deal with seasonality. Deal with interruptions, meeting short-term peak demand in the very cold winters. Could also use it for seasonal price arbitrage. So again, importantly, in the... Um, in the summer where prices are lower and then sell in the winter. However, that hasn't always worked out. And different countries have got different storage philosophies. Indigenous supply, relationships with the exporters and national experience. So thank you very much. Please like, please subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one.